Hello and welcome to this episode of Tradecraft Security Weekly. This is episode number 10. I'm your host, Bo Bullock. Uh, this week is going to be a blue team edition, and I have got with me Derek Banks from Black Hills InfoSec, the one and only Derek Banks. Welcome, Derek. He's he's here to talk about live response. So uh, yep, Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. So, Derek, let's uh, let's talk about live response. What is live response? So I guess before we talk about what live response is, uh, let's talk about uh, do you have an, an established incident response team? So before you can respond to an incident, you have to have an established incident response team. And then uh, once your team is in place, uh, what do you do when a system is potentially compromised? Um, so you know, traditionally, you'll go look at uh, memory by imaging it, uh, and then maybe if something happens in the memory, that you see that's that's bad uh, you might pull the disk out and then uh, you know, image that and then then more analysis after that right so sort of the traditional uh, you know forensics on a workstation type of thing right very but, time consuming having to go to each system um, that you think might be compromised so exactly and so um, you know sending a tech out and uh, or going yourself uh, especially like if it's a campus environment or um, uh, if it you know it might not even be possible if it's remote so that traditional model doesn't scale very well to a uh, geographically dispersed uh, enterprise um, so live response uh, would be um, responding to the incident and gathering uh, evidence and information uh, while the system is still running. Um, so while it's still online and the security analyst uses their tools uh, over the network rather than um, going and collecting uh, you know, evidence to be analyzed offline. Gotcha. And so, um, you know, that that kind of stuff presents, you know, challenges. Um, or if if you know, like I was saying, if you someone's VPN in from Hawaii and you're in New York City, um, obviously sending a tech out and getting evidence uh, can be a very, uh, you know, time consuming or or maybe even impossible thing. So really, what it comes down to is that you know your limited IR staff, uh, your analysts. You need to take those few people and be able to scale them to the many systems in your enterprise. So, how do you do that? So there, there are different lots of different products out, but you know, continuing with the theme of here lately, uh, you know, how can I do this uh, for free with open source products? Um, yeah, Google Rapid Response. Um, because you know, even in large enterprises, uh, I I hear all the time, "Hey, we have budget constraints. Uh, you know, we, we don't have any money for this." You know, and so with Google Rapid Response, there's you know, really the cost of the hardware and your time is uh, what it what's going to uh, you know be the cost, right? So, demo time. Let's show some Google Rapid Response. All right. So in this demo, uh, what we've done is uh, taken a weaponized document, and we uh, ran the weaponized document. And uh, of course, there's a, a, a macro that creates a um, interpreter session. So, so I actually now have two sessions open. Uh, from my lab box to my con command and control server. So we have an infected computer. So very common phishing uh, mechanism using a payload of like a, an Excel spreadsheet with a macro. So very, very common here. Right, right. And so, you know, there's some indication then from uh, hopefully from endpoint monitoring or, or some way. Uh, and in fact, here I'll, I'll show you in um, my. Uh, endpoint monitoring solution that we've talked about previously at Black Hills. Um, so yeah, this is a base 64 encoded PowerShell. If you see this, uh, probably ought to go and look. So in this case, uh, we start looking at this system. Okay, it ran some PowerShell that's that's kind of interesting, kind of suspicious, right? And so we start looking at what happened, and we find that 
from the desktop, the user ran uh, the totes legit spreadsheet, right? So the XLSM file, uh, in fact, we can actually search for that. So yeah, totes legit to XLSM, totally legit spreadsheet. <laughs> so, so now this, uh, we have an indication that, you know, or we have a suspicion that this is the source of the infection. Like, so how do we go get it? This machine is maybe 2000 miles away. That's where Google rapid response would come in, right? So um, from my Google rapid response co console, they have uh, a concept of, of, of flows that, uh, um, so you can run a flow on a machine or you can run a global search. And so, you know, this is a, a short demonstration of the capabilities of Google Rapid Response. I'm not even really even touching the service, but so one of the things that I can do though, is I can go grab this XLS document and analyze it uh, without having to go physically to the machine. Hey so, Derek, quick, quick question. Um, with the Google Rapid Response uh, service, is it, is it an agent that you install on every system? Yes, that's a good question. And so, uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, it, there's a binary that will uh, that when you install Google Rapid Response, you actually manage the binary from the console, and it is an agent and then a service that runs. Gotcha. So uh, now let's go look at the machine that got infected. Dot. So it's this uh, 171 machine, and uh, so I previously created a flow to go and grab the, the the spreadsheet that was suspicious. So it went and downloaded to the Google Rapid Response server uh, the actual spreadsheet. So let me show you on the Google Rapid Response. Now again, I'm running in a Docker container, so you know this is a, a, would be a little different than if you deployed it on you know, native hardware. But so what I do is I use uh, the um, the GUR export utility to go and output that file. And so what that would look like so now I have my totes legit spreadsheet and my XLS file that I could copy off and figure out you know uh, what went on in that macro um, and then even from now go and, you know, you know, find maybe like the, the secondary dropper if there was one and then go look at other machines, start finding out who else might be communicating to that, uh, to that, uh, you know, command and control server. So, uh, so, just to quickly summarize, so you, you were able to kind of identify from a, another tool that you had something malicious going on. Um, you were able to kind of trace that back that it was some, some PowerShell that probably was initiated from the Excel spreadsheet that was on a, a remote host that was, you know, obviously something you wouldn't be able to walk to. So you're, you're able to use Google Rapid Response to go grab that file forensically, pull it down, and now you have it and you can do analysis on it from where you're at. Correct. Awesome. Very good stuff. So, uh, you know, for the red team, um, you know, if you get a, a shell in a box, uh, it may be worthwhile to start looking to see uh, what services, Google Rapid Response, uh, NX Log. Uh, if you see things that uh, you're not used to, uh, maybe you should realize you may be being watched. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and so, like, you know, a lot of times we'll... Um you know, as, as pen testers from the red team side, we'll look at the different AVs or even even like behavioral analysis software, app whitelisting. We should be looking for these types of forensic softwares as well, maybe to kind of just get a better idea of what the blue team is going to be seeing whenever we're, we're performing our attacks. So That's right. that, that is it for this edition of Tradecraft Security Weekly. Make sure you go and uh, follow Derek on Twitter. He's uh, Zero X Daruk, and I'm at Daftac. Thank you so much for watching. And thanks, thanks. Derek. <laughs> Thank you for having me.